is a very rambunctious crowd. This is a rambunctious crowd. Well, hello, Tucson. It's great to be with you. I love, I love this place. We've been very successful here, as you know. And I'm thrilled to be back in the great state of Arizona with thousands of proud, hardworking American patriots. That's why this is a nice group. I like it. Look at all those people. Wow. As everyone saw two nights ago, we had a monumental victory over comrade Kamala Harris in the presidential debate. We won big with independent voters, moderates, Republicans, and working people all across this nation putting forward a clear vision to, very simply, make America great again. <laughs> Meanwhile, Kamala Harris showed up spewing empty rhetoric, the same old lies, meaningless platitudes, offering no plans, no policies, and no details whatsoever, nothing. The two anchors, David Muir and Lindsey Davis, sat there and only corrected me on things where I was right, but didn't correct Kamala on Project 25 that I knew nothing about, on the bloodbath hoax that has been totally debunked, which had to do with the automobile industry that is going to be dying. It's dying under this administration. They're all going to be shipped out to China. And everybody in the automobile industry making, manufacturing automobiles Vote for Trump. We're going to bring back that industry. These people are killing it. She talked about knowing it was all false. She talked about the Charlottesville hoax, and these people did nothing about it, which has been totally debunked, as they say, by Snopes and Snoops and everybody else. And go look it up. Go to Snoops, whatever the hell that is. No, I hear that's a liberal site. And they came out totally in favor of me. This has got to be a bad thing. But they said they gave you total phony stories. Kamala Harris said that no state allows abortion in the ninth month, which is a complete and total lie. They do. They do. And even after birth, in some cases, she claimed, I want to monitor women's pregnancies. I don't want to. I don't want to do that. I don't want to. It's a total lie. I don't want to do that. Women. I won't be following you around to the hospital, monitoring. No, she made it up. She's a liar. She doesn't work at McDonald's. She said she worked at McDonald's, right? Right? She worked at McDonald's, and she was working so hard. There's only one problem. She didn't work at McDonald's. She's a liar. Liar. She claimed that I want to deny people IVF treatment when, in fact, I want to require insurance companies to pay for it. And I came out totally in favor of IVF. That's fertilization for the men in the audience. <laughs> of which we got a lot of tough ones here. She claimed she doesn't want to ban fracking when she said repeatedly over a 10-year period I will not have fracking. Then about a little while ago, she goes, I'd love to have fracking. <laughs> Her pollster came back and said, this is not good. In Pennsylvania, you want to ban fracking, that's not so good. That's a big part of what they do, right? And uh, she came back. She came back. All of a sudden, she thought fracking was wonderful. Here's what happens with all of these things. Right after the election, she goes back to where she was. She claims she doesn't support mass gun confiscation when, in fact, she supported it entirely and through her entire career. Think of that. She wants to confiscate your guns. Does anybody in the audience have a gun? Raise your hand. Would you mind if this lunatic knocked on your door? Hello. I'd like to take away your gun. Is that all right? <laughs> Especially the women won't allow it. They're not going to allow it. That's unbelievable. 
What is that, about 100% of the audience? Let's go. Does anybody in the audience not have a gun? Wait, there's somebody. So if you want to keep your gun, we don't have to go through the rest of it. You want to keep your gun, vote for Trump, okay? I promise. But, you know, she did something even worse than that. You know what it is? She was the leader of a thing called a movement, Defund the Police. How about that? She was the leader of the movement to defund the police. Now, think of it. Anybody that wants to defund the police, that's called she's down and dirty left, okay? That's down and dirty. If she's in there for a week at defund the police, we don't want her to be president. We don't want her for anything, frankly. But all of a sudden, all of a sudden, she says, no, I never said it. You know, she actually goes around saying she never said it. But we've got like 10 years of tapes where she's saying it with the guns, with the fracking, with everything we mentioned. She had many years of tapes, but the public was not fooled. They saw right through it. Kamala's lies and unprecedented partisan interference of two low life anchors in low lives for them to do what they did. And they wouldn't correct her on like Project 25. I don't know what the hell it is. I purposely have not read it. I could, but I don't want to because they never had my authorization. And for them to allow her to get away with me, everything I said, uh, well, we don't think it's true, like the crime statistics. The FBI didn't report the most crime-ridden cities. They didn't do it. They left out large numbers of areas where they had a lot of crime. So the numbers came in, they weren't up too much. And if anybody in this audience doesn't think there's more crime now, there's so much more crime now, but they gave false and fraudulent numbers. They did it with something else. 818,000 jobs. Think of it. They said they had 818,000 jobs that didn't exist. So your jobs numbers look better. But now they had to do what happened is they were taken away by a leaker. Usually I don't like leakers, but I like this particular leaker, whoever it was. <laughs> but when a prize fighter loses a fight, you've seen a lot of fights, right? The first words out of that fighter's mouth is, I want to rematch. I want to rematch. And that's what she said. I want to rematch. Polls clearly show that I won the debate against comrade Kamala Harris. And as you probably know, because, you know, when you say Harris, does anybody know who Harris is? No. Kamala is a very... Different kind of a word. Nice name. Very nice name. But you know her as Kamala. You don't know her as Harris. When you say Harris, everyone says, who the hell is that, right? But she immediately called for a second debate, which means that she was like a price fighter that lost a fight. We had two debates, though. I had a debate with Crooked Joe Biden, right? And I had another debate with her. She and Crooked Joe have destroyed our country with millions of criminals and mentally deranged people pouring into the USA, totally unchecked, unvetted, and with inflation bankrupting our middle class, it has gotten bad. Everyone knows this and all of the other problems caused by Kamala and Joe. It was discussed in great detail during the first debate with Joe and the second debate with Comrade Harris. She was a no-show at the Fox debate. You know, Fox invited her. She was a no-show. I sat with the great Sean Hannity. Does anybody know Sean Hannity? Good man. He's a good man. And I said, where is she? She didn't show. So we did a town hall. And he got great ratings on that town hall, I'll tell you right now. Got really great. Led all of television for the week. It's not bad, right? Simple town hall. Turned out to be... Uh, it turned out to be a town hall from what it was supposed to be, but she didn't show up and refused also to do NBC and CBS. She went over to ABC, which, in my opinion, has taken a big hit because these two people were bad news. They kept screaming at me. I said, why are you screaming? I'm saying to myself, I'm looking at him. I always liked him. I'm not going to watch him anymore. 
I'm not going to watch him because he's not legit, what he did. I'm not going to watch him. And his hair's not as good as it used to be, you know? Kamala should focus on what she should have done during the last almost four-year period. She kept complaining, well, you know, when I'm in, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. And at the end of the debate, I said, why don't you just do it? You could leave right now. Why don't you do it? I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to do this and that and that. Remember at the convention when she went out and they nominated her, even though she got no votes, they nominated her. No, she came in last place in the primaries, right? And then she got, and then she said, Donald Trump is a threat to democracy. No, she's a threat to democracy. She is a threat to democracy. But do you remember when she went out and she said, thank you? Do you remember that? It was the weirdest thing. Am I wrong? Because they were saying, JD and I are weird. No, we're very solid people. She's weird. And that vice president of hers is really weird. He's really. That was a sound bite. You know, they said, uh, oh, he's weird. That was, in other words, they gave it to their friends in the fake news. Weird. It's something I've never called. I've been called a lot of bad things, but not weird. But, you know, she went out and the people were applauding and stuff. And she goes, thank you. 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 I think she went nuts. There was something wrong with her. But I was very happy because I got the endorsement of the vice president's family. And I got the endorsement of the vice president's brother. And even sent me a contribution. And and I was very happy because uh, Barack Hussein Obama, his brother, as you know, endorsed me. So, no, his brother endorsed me. That's not easy. Now, he, uh, so we have the endorsement of President Obama's brother. We have the endorsement of the brother of the future vice president. He better not win. If he ever won, this country will be in bad shape. It's already in bad shape. Three and a half years of what they've done to this country, especially, look, we're laughed at all over the world. We would have never had the Russia-Ukraine problem. We would have never had, we would have never had October 7th, Israel, the attack on Israel. None of these things, and we wouldn't have had inflation. And we wouldn't have had that horrible, the way we pulled out in Afghanistan was so horrible. None of those things would have happened. We would have had a much different country. And we wouldn't have 21 million people in our country right now that shouldn't be here. That I can tell you. So because we've done two debates and because they were successful, there will be no third debate. too late anyway. The voting's already begun. You got to go out and vote. We got to vote. We're going to, this is going to be the most important vote in the history of our country. It'll be the most important. People said that I was angry at the debate. Angry. I was angry. And yes, I am angry because he allowed 21 million illegal aliens invading our communities. Many of them are criminals. Many are criminals. I'm angry. I'm angry. They said he's an angry person. No, they're destroying our country. I don't like she's you know, she's smiling, all practice, right? Did you see her? She's like a we're talking about a border invasion, the likes of which no country has ever suffered. And she's like this. But I am angry about Venezuelan gangs taking over Aurora, Colorado. And illegal Haitians, and he came in, illegal Haitian migrants 
taking over a beautiful place. It was so beautiful. Springfield, Ohio. I was there. I campaigned there a while ago. Springfield, it was so beautiful. Now it's just, what a place. Can you imagine you have this small little community, all of a sudden you have 20,000 illegals in your community. Nobody knows where they come from. I'm angry about young American girls being raped and sodomized and murdered by savage criminal aliens. I'm angry about rampant inflation destroying our middle class and the American people are also very angry about that and every other thing that we've had to endure for three and a half years. That's why 54 days from now, we are going to tell Harris that we've had enough. Our country can't take it anymore. We're going to go, Comrade Kamala Harris, you've done a horrible job. You've been the worst vice president in the history of our country. You had no chance of getting this position. You shouldn't have had it. You got no votes. Whether you like Biden or not, he got 14 million votes. She had none, not one. We're going to go, comrade, you're fired. Get out. Get out. Get out. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. So, thank you. Wasn't The Apprentice a great show, though, was it? Do you think if I didn't do The Apprentice, because that's a big question, because a lot of people in Hollywood are blaming themselves for this. They're saying, if we didn't do The Apprentice, he wouldn't be. But, you know, they all vote for me, you know that, because they want to pay low taxes. They talk about, no, we don't like Trump. But when they go to vote, they go, anybody watch? So they want low taxes, no crime, great schools, strong military. They don't want a border invasion. They don't want people pouring across the border illegally from prisons and places. So they go in, they say, yeah, no, no, I'm not for Trump at all. I will never vote for him. Then they go in. So. It's true. And then they go out and they do exit polls. And, you know, in 2016 and, and 2020, where I got many more, millions more votes, by the way, I hate to say that. They say, oh, that's a conspiracy theorist. No, it's called, I got more votes than any sitting president in the history of our country. And they said we lost. I was told if I got 63 million votes, which is what I got in 2016, you can't lose. Just get 63. I got close to 12 million more votes than that. And we lost, but we didn't lose. What, what a, and we're never going to let that happen again in this country. We're never going to let that happen. We can't let that happen again. But when they had exit polls 2016, and they said, oh, he's getting killed in the exit polls. And I remember NBC and that stupid ABC that did this horrible debate. Those two people should be fired as an anchor. A couple of more years, they'll be fired. And she was nasty. She looked at me with hatred in her eyes. And him, he's a nice guy. I mean, they were told to do it by George Slobodopoulos, who's, who's in the group, right? George Slobodopoulos. But, but... On the exit poll, so people are walking out and they're saying, uh, you know, I uh, would like to know something, sir. Who'd you vote for? And they'd say, uh, Crooked Hillary or Trump, right? But so many of them, like almost 50 percent, said, none of your business who we voted for. They have a tougher word, two words, not like Biden, one word, and then he gives two. Two words. They begin with the letters F-U. That's what they say to the people. F-U. I would never say them because we have a lot of young people here. My audience have gotten, they've gotten younger and younger. Do you notice that? Younger and younger. 
Don't worry, I still like the old people the best. I don't care. I don't care. Let that cost me, all these young people. Let that cost me the election. I like the, I still like the old people the best. Got to stay with the people that got you there, right? I love the, what we're doing for the old people, you'll hear. But it, so that was the two words, but I don't want to use those words. So they said, none of your business, which is not really what they said. And they walked out and everybody said, Trump is finished. He's got, he's not getting the numbers. He's Because in the past, nobody said that. They'd say, I'm voting for this one or that one. There were no people that wouldn't say, you know, they'd just say who they voted for. So what they did, thank you, darling, thank you. So what they did, you know, she keeps saying, I love you, I love you, right in the middle of my punchline. She keeps... <laughs> so, so they always say one or the other. And I had one analyst who was very smart, but I was called by Fox, this person in Fox, sir, I'm sorry, sir, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. And they say, this is four o'clock in the afternoon, because, you know, they've, interviewed all these people. And another one would call me. They all said, oh, they were actually happy. Most of them were happy. Some were really sad, though. A lot of the people were really sad. So it came out, this is going to be a very short evening for Donald Trump. They were so happy. Martha Raddatz was actually crying at the end when I won. She was crying. <laughs> you don't think she's biased, do you? Martha Raddatz, also of ABC. ABC is the worst of the group, by the way, I have to tell you. They're all bad. But the worst, the worst is ABC, and they prove that with the stupid worst, the worst two anchors anybody's ever seen on this thing. They were the worst. 